This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website PokemonCard.io. Are you looking for sealed product and singles? You can find it all on Channel Fireball. Please use my Teomon affiliate code when checking out to help support my content. Looking for PTGO codes? Photon Store has all the latest sets and promos instantly delivered to your email. You can use Tailmon code when checking out for 5% off. If you're from Europe, Millipods Gaming has a wide array of sealed products, singles and more. You can use Tailmon code when checking out for 5% off. Card Market is Europe's largest online marketplace for Pokemon cards. Whether you're looking for sealed product or singles, vintage or the latest sets, just follow the link in the description to find what you need. Want to show off your love for Tablemon? Check out my 2021 merch. These new hoodies and shirts are available on Amazon. Click on the link in the description to get your... Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video here. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to be playing with the ADP Birds deck that has been going around. It recently won the Hyperlux $500 event. Teledeath from Italy used this deck list to win the event. Um, went 9 and 2 all the way to take the win and the $200 prize pool for first place. So the deck relies on ADP using Altered Creation GX, of course, to get the bonus damage and get a bonus prize card whenever you take a knockout. And then if you can ultimate raid, great. But if you can't, then the two birds are actually really good. Galarian Zapdos B has a fighting instinct ability where you can attack for um, colorless less for each of your opponent's Pokemon being play. So you could potentially attack for a single energy, which is pretty nice. Um, definitely welcome against the Ternatus VMAX, which can be problematic for this deck. And then we also have the Galarian Moltres V with the Tire Flame Wings ability, which allows it to attach a dark energy from the Zero Ball. To this Pokemon, you can't use more than one ability per turn, however, but over the course of two turns, you can prop Color and Moltres, or with the energy switches and the Metal Saucers that we play for Station, you can Metal Saucer to a Station, transfer the energy to the Moltres with Energy Switch, use Dire Flame Wings to attach a Dark, and then find another Dark with one of the three Radiant Forests attached to it, and then you immediately have a 220 damage. Um, 220 damage basic Pokemon that's also Dark type against Shadow Rider, Calyrex, and VMAX. We do play a wide variety of energies, especially the Aurora, so that we can cover the different attack costs and even help us with discarding energies in case we need that. Um, I'm surprised there's no basic fighting energy that can be searched for with the Viridian Forest. I'm really, really surprised. But I guess it turned into, despite Shadow Rider, Calyrex being quite popular, isn't as popular as you would expect it to be. But the rest of the deck is pretty standard ADP. We have the Mowal, the Station, the Oricorio, the, the Dene, the Eldegoss, no Crobat, which is interesting. Um, we have the four bosses along with the Great Catcher. We have our Quick Balls and our Church Ball, our Research, our Marnie, etc. So let's jump into the ladder and see if we can win. I called it ADP Box, but I guess it should be called ADP Birds. Um, all right, let's see what we can do here. And I'm coming off of the last video, if you saw it, um, me playing um, Pika Peak and me stamping my opponent to two and giving them switch, energy, and research, right? Um, they only needed the switch and the energy, the research was even a luxury. And then getting this beautiful hand. It's really hard for me to, to stay positive sometimes <laughs> when that sort of thing happens, but hey, we'll see. We still have our top deck. We're probably up against Urshifu, never mind. We're up against Ice Rider, I imagine now. <clears throat> Ice Rider, Calyrex. No Calyrex down or no attachment to it either, so that's good news. And our top deck saves me, so never mind. We are good to go. Okay, well, I mean, it saves me though. Uh, losing these energies, not ideal, but it is what it is gonna have to did a change i did price one to Dene and one adp and one quick ball so oof but i mean just going for adp here doesn't make much sense does it if i go adp attach the water to it nah let's just go for today all right, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go ahead and discard this, grab a dark, and put in the discard pile already. I'll go ahead and data change. Well, okay. 
Um, I'm just gonna research. Going all out with this deck is how you win, right? Okay, this is actually pretty okay. I'll go ahead and quick wall away that for my ADP. I get to attach energy to ADP. I get to Metal Saucer energy here. I also get to Dire Flame Wings and energy right here. And I get to Intrepid Sword. So overall, not bad. I even have energy switch in case I need to hammer, in case I get hammered, sorry. As <laughs> I'm not gay. <laughs> that sounded pretty funny, in case I get hammered. Um, in case my ADP gets crushing hammered. Um, Viridian Forest guarantees me the water. They might play Path to a Peak. At least I got to use the Dene already. Um, and then I just go crazy with the research and I have waters and auroras that I can draw to pull off my GX attack. So I'm okay even getting hammered. <laughs> that sounds pretty funny. All right, so we do see the Quick Ball. We do see the Quick Ball right here. Oh, it's Intillion. It's not even Ice Rider Calyrex. It's a double Intillion deck. I can see how this deck is a little bit clunky though. And by a little bit, I mean quite clunky. But after you GX, you're fine, right? In theory. All right, we see the Melanie as well. No path to the peak yet. Water drip, not scary. I don't have a lightning type attacker to KO Intillion in one hit, but they also can't KO me in one hit, so that's good. All right, two Pokemon being play already, so that's potentially useful for Zapdos. Triple of these guys now, that's a little scary. Okay. So if I had a boss, I would absolutely go after the Intellion, but I do not, so I'm not going to. <laughs> I'll just grab my water energy. I'm honestly gonna transfer the energy from, yeah, Moltres to this guy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and herbal him here, and I'm gonna go ahead and Marty. So why am I doing that? Because of Enkillion VMAX's um, attack that returns an energy. That is why. All right, so I'm gonna retreat, use my ability, and we'll go ahead and alter creation GX. So I don't have any draw power anymore. There is one Crobat down. So I might go after that. My opponent does play Crushing Hammers, yikes. There's another Intillion now. There is another Intillion. Which if it evolves, then like there's no point. However, my best play now, if I could power up Moltres, which I can't anymore, so now the energy switch is coming back to bite me. So like if I could KO this guy with Moltres and I always have Crobat as an out to win the game. But since I don't... Okay, then Tillen probably gets my opponent a supporter plus a path to a peak now finally. They have to be playing path to a peak, right? They absolutely, yeah. Crushing Hammer and path to a peak. The Crushing Hammer is also very scary now. Yep. Ooh, they get rid of the metal. That's very weird. That is honestly very weird. A very weird choice. Because you have to know that's the most common energy, right? Okay, so... That boss, I mean, that research top deck doesn't really help me. Oh, I'm out of metal energies. Are you serious? I priced, oh, I priced one. Okay. Uh, well, this is not bad. I mean, this is not good. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the combination of energy in my discard pile is literally the worst that it could be. Yikes. 
big yikes. Okay, so I'm not playing boss. Jeez, oh, dude. I think I play escape rope. Because otherwise I need to find a switch, right? Or energy switch. And yeah, and then I have to go and tilt it no matter what, so... Oh, this sucks, dude. Wow, so... I mean, removing the water would have accomplished the same thing, right? But my opponent didn't technically know that. Alright, so we do go research. Now we get everything that we could possibly want. 160 doesn't KO me. So that's good. Um, I'm gonna save the saucers in case my opponent decides that um, he wants to go boss KO station off of the one card hand. I mean, I do have double boss, right? So I can chase this guy down or I can go double KOs. Okay, path to the peak and Marty. Ugh. I'm gonna get punished for not playing those two saucers, aren't I? Yep, very punished. Dude, super punished. <laughs> I'm gonna get super punished for not playing those two saucers, aren't I? Yeah, because now if I attack with Moltres, I, ca I kill myself. Oh boy. They're just searching for crushing hammers. I'm not playing those two saucers. Okay. I'm gonna have to KO myself. <laughs> That's so dumb, dude. That is actually so dumb. And then with a boss, they just win the game. But I have to attack, right? If I had played the two saucers... I mean, the Marnie just completely killing my hand is... Nothing special, right? Everyone knows that happens, so just play Marnie against me and you win, but... Uh, I guess I played too cautiously there. Yeah, there it is. So why? Why do you all go ahead and attach energy? You just need boss to win the game. Why do you start your turn by attaching energy when you have that guy to just win the game? And... <laughs> Why do you grab? Why? 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 Like, seriously, why? You have to win, just play the freaking cards to win, dude. It's the second opponent in a row that does to me. That does this. It's so dumb. Oh, it's so bad mannered. Just, if you're gonna win, just win. Why do you wanna show off with a tool scrapper? What the heck? Okay. Um, if I had Metal Saucered twice, my opponent's play would have been to retreat. And then if I don't have balls, which I didn't, I would have been in an awkward situation still. So even though I didn't play the two Metal Saucers, I still would have been in a pretty bad spot, honestly. Not the worst, but not the best either. Okay, this is a pretty solid hand overall. Especially going first. If I get to do this for station. And then I get to do this, do this, attach to the active, use my ability in case of pass to the peak. And intrepid sword for I mean the stadium is good to get the water, right? Stadium is pretty good to get the water. Sabdos will definitely be useless here. Zapdos should be pretty useless right here. You want to make table and mat? Play Marnie and then BBM when you have the win in hand already. Gosh, dude. Tool scrapper. <laughs> it's either that or my opponent can't do mat. One of the two. 
All right, CA greens. So we're probably gonna use Victini to power up. They do need energy, Victini and switch, right? Switch is three cards. Green zone gets them two, so maybe they won't have all three. But off of that hand, yeah, you'd expect them to have at least one of them, right? Already. So we're gonna see the spinner for three fires, interesting. I see a quick wall of fire, probably. Yep, for the Victini. Attach, switch. All right, so good start for both. I am happy to see that, right? And this means we get to play the game. Can't do 300 damage no matter what. They can welder to start pressuring. So this guy is definitely not going to be useful at all. One water is priced. All right. So we, don't, we know they have two fires, no one fire in their hand. So that takes away or reduces the chance of welder, I guess. Although with the reinforce, they can still welder. Now all I do is alter creation. I don't over bench because of the GX attack. We'll take a KO on Victini and then we'll see what else we can do. We shall see what else we can do here. <clears throat> see a doll, not a big issue for this deck that plays four boss and the great catcher and an escape rope. Not the biggest of deals. I don't know why my green screen is working less well. Right. That's how you fix the faulty green screen, I guess. <laughs> Just cover it up. All right, so I'll see the gate lane gets back the greens. I don't know if my opponent plays scoop up net. They might go power up this guy to spread the energy maybe we'll see it's rid of the viridian that's fine okay doesn't use the giant hearth though so we know they have greens we don't know if they have welder okay so they do spread the energy around so here's what i'm thinking i'm thinking i go after this guy Kind of want to take a look at their hand first to see what my play is, though. Or I could just send the ADP. I want to take a look. This gives me solid information, I think. Okay, so they have greens. They don't have welder. They don't have welder. So this is the plan now. I do this, discard the research, and then I go boss on this guy. So I have double boss back to back. And then after I take this KO, all I need to do is um, KO the um, KO the the Victini, right? Which is much easier than like if I KO Victini there, my opponent just comes up, attacks me, and then I'm in a little bit of trouble because they can I attack them and then they GX. But this way, they can GX. But then they're not doing any damage to me whatsoever. So I'd be okay with that. They would be essentially losing the turn. And if they GX, then I go Eldegoss boss this guy. So it's a win-win. That greens means either they attack me with the other guy, or um, they power up again. I don't know. We'll see. But I definitely fancy knocking out this guy first. Because then I have three other bosses orders to just target down Victini. Unless they play scoop up net. But I guess I'm taking that risk. I guess I am taking that risk. So that's my logic. Because if I kill Victini, then attack into the bird, then they GX, then I have to attack the bird twice more. So it's KO Victini, attack bird, attack bird, attack bird. It's winning four turns. If I knock out this guy, if I attack this guy, then they don't GX, I boss it, I KO it, and then I boss again, then I win in three turns. So it's less turns that they have to potentially win. And then if I whiff boss, then the other way would have been the exact same situation, I guess, in theory, right? 
And it turns out they didn't have another switch, so if they had to attach and retreat, they weren't even attacking that turn. So that was that was my train of thought. Having played a lot with that deck and knowing the struggles of um, like the GX attack is really good, but having a backup Articuno Moltres Zapdos is not easy. And um, ideally, you want to attack, take a take a hit, and then GX. GXing at, before you've even dealt any damage is not ideal because it takes so much to power up um, one of the birds, right? All right. So Grave Risk is calling the coin flip. And it's choosing who goes first. Let's me go first. So that could indicate a Cresselia, a Volcanian, or a Picrum based on the deck box. Could just be Picarum. We'll see. Okay, not the best start for me. Because if I have to data change these four resources immediately on turn one, that's not ideal. And it is Picarum. And there's another resource that's very useful that I don't want to get rid of, but the deck leaves me no choice. <laughs> All right, so let's get ADP. There's still the potential for Crushing Hammer, so I'm gonna go ahead and attach this, and then I'll go ahead and Intrepid Sword. Um, no way to retreat for me. If I have to dead change again, that's gonna be really bad. Well, I mean, not ideal, right? At the very least, not ideal. So I'm gonna lose a Saucer. We'll see. We shall see. And Eldegoss does, well, I guess Eldegoss, yeah, Eldegoss is the exact same result because I have to research anyways. All right. And if this is path to a peak peak, if this is peak a peak, then we are in a lot of trouble. And that Guzmahala probably indicates peak a peak. They're gonna get peak, air balloon, and the speed energy. Could just be Raichu, right? Not even peak around. There's the path to a peak, and that's where my game ends. <laughs> Jeez. That is where I immediately lose the game. Their perfect turn one was like this as a resource that you don't want to lose versus my... Ugh. So what did they grab? Did they grab Air Balloon? Yeah, so they have an Air Balloon in their hand. So my boss is completely useless. My boss is actually completely useless. I don't have Marshadow. I don't have any way out of this. Even if I had Marshadow, best I could do would be Intrepid Sword, so. Yeah, I mean, I can thin in case I top deck, I guess. One of my three stadiums. <laughs> Maybe they don't have energy. Oof. Can't win a game with ADP, apparently, no matter which version. I mean, I guess I won last game, but still. All right. No point in continuing this. Obviously, I've lost the game path to a peak, right? Path to a peak, just too powerful. How is this ADP deck able to bypass the path to the peak decks? I don't know. Just draw better than table one, right? It's that simple. <laughs> Just don't draw like table one. That's the number one advice lately on my channel. Just don't draw like table one and you'll be fine. Probably win a lot if you don't draw like me. Okay. When the coin flip, let's go first. Let's get a good start. Uh, Good-ish. Good-ish. All right. 
Let's end this on a high note. The opponent taking a while to decide what to do. Shadow Rider, okay. And I get a quick bolt top deck. That's actually very nice. That is actually very nice. Do I even bother switching already? I think I do. Okay, so one potential issue is um, my opponent attacking with Shadow Mist and therefore I can't attach Aurora Energy. <laughs> I can only attach a Water. So that is a potential issue right off the bat. That Shiny Shadow could do. There's the attachment. That's exactly what's going to happen, isn't it? <laughs> That is exactly... <laughs> I knew it. I called it. Unbelievable, dude. Okay, so I'm clearly gonna let it change here. My opponent's hand is not good. I do have three stadiums. I prized all my basic water energy in the game where the... Oh. I can't believe this, dude. I truly can't believe this. How am I this unlucky, man? How? How am I this stupidly unlucky? <laughs> I can't believe it, dude. I'm gonna cry. I am actually going to cry. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. I mean, I couldn't play the Brilliant Forest anyways, but still. Oh my god. Oh my god. Here we go. Here we go. I've lost, haven't I? <laughs> wow, my opponent went from attached path to this. Why would you attach there, though? That's... Peculiar. Okay. What? <laughs> am I dead or not? I just want to know that. Am I dead or am I not dead? They're trying to make me dead. Wow. I mean, I'm, well, oh, I can retreat, I guess. Yeah, I'd rather lose two prizes than three. All right, there's Moltres. No switching card, though, other than the stupid escape rope. Okay, so... <laughs> Like, I don't need, I need both Moltresses. That's what I need. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Everything that can go wrong is going wrong, dude. Understand what's happening anymore. I mean, I need a switch no matter what, right? I need a switch no matter what. Well, not no matter what, but I need one for sure. Okay. <laughs> I do have mobile and I do have Mercurio and I do have the other Moltres. So that's 
like step number one. Okay, so I need Moltres. I need Dire Flame Wings. I need. I needed this. Okay, so I need a Dark Energy. That's what I need. So I'm gonna play this. Bench your Sapdos because why not? We'll go ahead and Energy Switch. We'll go ahead and Saucer. Go ahead and quick wall with the other Moltres. Go ahead and bench your Ikorio and then go ahead and research. Okay, so I do find the energy. Now get me a dark energy. Oh no, I already used tire flame wings. Never mind. Uh do I have okay. I'm not gonna need Great Catcher, that's for sure. I did get the switch. I also got an energy switch, so I'll transfer from Mowal to this guy. Okay. So technically I have the win in my hand. Technically. And I only have two Poke. Oh no, I do have three Pokemon V in play, so they can KO me. <laughs> <laughs> this is a slap in the face, man. They can KO me with Sapdos. They should KO me with Sapdos. That should be their goal. And they need to attack my hand. So, oh, okay. So if they play Chaotic Spell and Path to the Peak, I just buffooned myself with countering the Chaotic Swell. Uh, what? Okay, that's a mistake. They should have attached to the Sapdos. Oh no, Sapdos doesn't get a KO. I'm thinking Sapdos does 200 after ADP, but Sapdos doesn't get a KO. Sorry, my bad. My bad, my bad. Three cards left for them. They did research. There's the stamp. Path. No, okay. Jeez. <laughs> what a game. What a game. This doesn't have to be on the bench, right? No. Okay, so it's over. It's over. See? You have the win, you play the win. I don't need to use a recorder, I don't need to use research. You have the win, you play the win. Yeah. Message to my previous opponents. All right. We got a win and we didn't need ADP. <laughs> we got a win and we didn't even need ADP. That's gonna be it for this video. A lot of frustrating moments for sure. Um, feels like the deck needs a Marshadow as an extra way to counter um, Path to the Peak because it is pretty detrimental to the deck, um, especially later on. That will be all for me. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed ADP Birds and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.